This video will be the first of three that takes a look at Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, so we'll start with creating and making Blackboard Collaborate available to your students. <clears throat> Uh, the first thing we need to do is add a link to Blackboard Collaborate on our course menu. Starting with the top left corner of the course menu, click the plus button and choose tool link. Um, the name would be Blackboard Collaborate. Or uh, you may also be, uh, some people refer to it as virtual office hours um, or something along those lines. I stick with Blackboard Collaborate because that's what it says when they get to the page. That's the name of the tool. Um, so we name what we want to call Collaborate. Um, and then the type is going to be Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. We won't be using Scheduling Manager at all. That's an older uh, tool. Um, so you'll title it and then choose Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. And then we want to make this link available to students. Um, the only reason you wouldn't make this a link available to students is if you wanted to record um, without them being able to see those recordings um, as soon as they process. Um, so we click Submit. Um, as normal, it, it adds this new item to the bottom of our course menu. When we click this, um, it's going to open here in Blackboard. And you have a course room that's always available. And, and I say course room, but it's just a session that's always there. It's not date restricted. Um, so you don't have to create sessions. You can just use this one. Uh, when students come to this page, they click this small icon right here and join room. Uh, depending on their internet connection, they may be also uh, they may be able to call in. The big thing to know about that is these numbers are specific to each user. Um, the faculty member, so basically you guys watching these videos, um, you'll also have some additional settings, so like editing what the default role is that a student joins a session with, um, viewing attendance reports. If you wanted to invite a guest speaker from off campus, from another institution, from anywhere, you'd use this copy link. Um, this link lets somebody join a session without having to log into our Blackboard uh, system. And let's see, so that default course room is always there. Let's look at creating a session. You would create sessions for a couple of different reasons. Um, if you needed um, to provide groups space to work together online, you could create uh, sessions, group one, group two, group three. If you wanted, if you're teaching a speech class or another class where perhaps students need to record a demonstration, like a teaching demonstration, you could create sessions for each student. I know that seems time consuming, but the name of the session is also going to be the name of the recording. So if everybody's in teaching demonstration assignment number one, every single recording will be called teaching demonstration number one, assignment number one, and then the only difference will be the date and time. So your session names are really important if you're going to have a lot of different students using them. If you're just using this for uh, meeting with students or holding office hours, I would just use the course room as it's already there. Uh, students can access it this way. If you want to send it out in an email or, or announcement, um, let's see, edit settings, and we can use this uh, guest link. That's for people outside. Uh, really, students are going to want to go through Blackboard to get to this. Um, they'll have it. I'm making a video about the Collaborate app uh, that's also available for faculty. Um, and so if you try to open the session on a mobile phone or tablet, you, you'll be prompted to open that Blackboard Collaborate app, um, which allows you to do all the same things you'd be able to do on a desktop or laptop computer. Anyway, let's circle back around. So we have a course room. Let's look at creating sessions if you need that. So click Create Session. You can give it a name. So if we uh, have a group, we can call it uh, Groups. We can call it Group Number One. Or we could say Drew's uh, recording space, whatever it needs to be. Um, a start date is so when when does it become available? I uh, just use no end that way it's there and it's available for them the whole semester. Uh, this doesn't appear until you type the title. If you want to allow them to bring in guests, you can. Uh, you can also just disable it. Um, early entry. You're not going to use repeat session really unless you want um, a different session for each uh, meeting. 
early entry is how soon do you want to allow students to get into the session? So if you say, hey, I'm going to have a voluntary session or my office hours start at noon, can they join a few minutes early to make sure they don't have any technical problems? Um, the next thing down is going to be session settings. And so it's going to want to know how we, what, what role or level of access do we want students to join the session with. Uh, participants, they're allowed to chat, uh, enable their audio and video, um, and raise their hand. That's about it. A presenter allows them to scroll through sides or interact with the whiteboard. And moderator, it, that's essentially the teacher. It gives you full access to all of the tools in Blackboard Collaborate. If I'm creating sessions for students and groups, I set the default role to moderator so they have the full collection of tools. Um, if we want these recordings to be available for download, we can check this box. I don't do that for student work, but if I'm using Collaborate to record lectures, um, I check that box. That way, if students need to download those, they can. This will be uh, really important right now if students have limited access to internet. They may be able to download multiple MP4 files while they have access, and then where, when they get wherever they don't, they'll be able to watch those and kind of participate that way. Otherwise, they're going to have to stream or try to download those wherever they're at. Um, I can't see any reason why we'd want to hide who the messages are from unless you were doing maybe a um, kind of a talk to all of your students and you wanted to give them an opportunity to ask questions without kind of putting their name out there. You could use that. Um, participants, that's the default role again for students. Uh, do we want them to be able to share their audio? video, uh, chat messages, and draw on the whiteboard and files. You can enable or disable these here, but they can also be changed within the session. Um, do we want to allow students to join by phone? This is just a good option during our current time. Um, and then private chat if you want to enable that or uh, you want the ability to see those. Um, and then finally, we'll click the Save button. That means this space is ready to go. and. As a student, I can come to this page from Blackboard Collaborate, I can join the course room, or um, if this is a, a session that I'm supposed to be using to record my work in, I would click here and it'll open up Blackboard Collaborate and I can kind of get started with my project. So this is just creating sessions and making Blackboard Collaborate Ultra available on your course menu. Uh, the other videos will talk to you about the Blackboard Collaborate interface. Uh, you'll have another about the tools within Blackboard, and then of course we'll have a student component.